Welcome to the Rosny College Electronics series of videos. In this video we'll be examining Schmidt triggers in a little bit more detail. So a Schmidt trigger is defined where the output um, determines the threshold voltage change. Now I'll go through what that means in a moment. <coughs> we can create a Schmidt trigger by simply using a buffer circuit or two inverters connected together in series. So two inverters connected together in series can be, will create a buffer circuit. We'll examine what the behaviour of this is uh, before we go into actual Schmidt triggers. So a buffer is not a Schmidt trigger it is, or a Schmidt device. It is simply an input where the in logical input is equal to the logical output. Uh, now if you remember the logical input is simply a voltage. Now if that voltage um, is coming from an analog source, so a source where the voltage could be anything, then the actual voltage that that is is going to determine what the uh, behavior of this circuit is. So if I were to control that voltage using a potentiometer like so, I can adjust the uh, knob on this potentiometer here and that will have the corresponding effect of controlling the voltage here between 0 volts and 9 volts. So I can control the voltage on the input of this first inverter uh, to be anything I like between 0 and 9 volts. The output of our um, Schmidt trigger however is either going to be a logic high or a logic low. They're a digital device. So the output is going to be close to our supply voltage, 9 volts, or close to 0 volts. And nowhere in between. So if I were to graph what this looked like, my input voltage and my output voltage, so I'll label those on my graph here, and my circuit V in is the voltage on the input pin of this first uh, inverter, and the output voltage is the voltage on the output pin of the second inverter, so the output of our um, output of our buffer circuit. If we gradually increase the voltage on the input of that first inverter, we see that the as we increase the input voltage, so we're going from left to right on our graph, we'll reach some voltage, which we call the voltage threshold voltage. This threshold voltage is the point where this circuit will change state. So when it changes state, it goes from a low to a high. Then the output voltage, which is how high above up the graph we are, will go from being a low voltage to a high voltage. And so if we gradually increase that voltage, we see at some point that the output of our Output voltage of our circuit here changes from being approximately zero to approximately nine in this case, or whatever the supply might be. And then, if we were to go back again, so if we decrease the voltage, we see that at the same threshold voltage, we get the same change of state happening. So, as we decrease the voltage, we reach some our threshold voltage again, and we go back from a high to a low. So the um, the changing of state happens at the threshold voltage and that is determined entirely by the uh, inver two inverters there, not by the input voltage or the state of those inverters. If we were to modify our circuit slightly, so I'll redraw it, we've got our two inverters in series again and the same potentiometer set up as before. However, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the output of our circuit to the input of our circuit with a resistor. And this is called feedback. So the feedback in your circuit is taking some of the output and applying it to the input. Now let's think about what happens here. As we increase the voltage on the 
input here. As before, the output voltage will not change state, it will stay 0 volts until we reach some triggering voltage or threshold voltage here that change makes this change state. So as we increase this, the voltage here is increasing, but the voltage here does not increase, which will cause a current to flow from here through this bypass or this feedback resistor into the output. That has the effect of increasing the input threshold voltage in order to make, make it change state. So here's my input voltage and output voltage. And they are the same, so there's my V in there and V out here again. And as I increase my input voltage, so we're going from left to right, the threshold voltage has changed. So we've got a new threshold here now. And this is, I'm going to call it VT off to on. So this is the threshold voltage to change it from being an off state to an on state. So as I increase this voltage here, some of the uh, output or some of the current will go through this feedback resistor, which has the effect of requiring a larger voltage on here in order to make it change state from low to high. In the reverse case, so we've now got a high state, so we've got a let's say we've wound it all the way up to nine volts and it's triggered, and the output here is close to nine volts. As we start to decrease it, we're decreasing the voltage here. This, like before, we're decreasing, like before, where we're decreasing the voltage this way. The output stays high, but the input is getting smaller and smaller. And so that has the effect of making this voltage here higher than this voltage here, making a current flow in the opposite direction as to before. The effect of that is to reduce, or make the voltage that this thing will uh, change state at lower than the, the voltage that it would have changed state at. And so if we were to graph that, what it would look like, so if we start up here, as we go lower voltage, so we're going input is lower, the output isn't changing, and it doesn't change state at this threshold voltage here now. It keeps at the high state, with a lower voltage. And after a, sh a little while, it will change from a high state to a low state, but at a different voltage than from a low state to a high state. So as we go from a low to a high, the direction of my um, pathway here through my, um, I've graphed off my voltages, is as the arrows have shown. So I go from along here and then I need a, a, a reach a high, higher threshold voltage to turn it on. And once it's on, it takes a lower threshold voltage in order to turn it back off again. So I'm going to call this this threshold voltage Vt from on to off. And these two are not equal. Unlike with just the buffer circuit before, the threshold voltage from on to off is equal to the threshold voltage from off to on. And so that has the um, what we call hysteresis. So where the pathway from um, one voltage to another is different to the return pathway, then we call that a hysteresis. So hysteresis. This is an important concept, and it is useful in several applications. If you have a look at uh, my video on on debouncing, there is an example of where that works, or where that is used.